Hi, welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound Channel and part 10 in the series all about the modules in my Project 12 DIY Modular Analog Synth. In this episode we're going to be looking at a percussive noise module that I've built which gives me a hi-hat and a snare. Now the original circuit is taken from Tiny Dazzler Electronics um, which in itself was adapted by Christian for his modular in a week series um, and I've kind of tweaked it a little bit more to fit my needs here. The main difference is on the decay pot in the original Tiny Dazzler schematic I'll put the link to the schematics in the description but in that original schematic the pot was something like a one meg when Christian uh, built his circuits for his modular in a week I think he reduced that down to 100k I originally started with 100k and I found that most of the control that I wanted was in the first quarter of the turn of, of the pot and the other three quarters basically didn't really make that big a difference to to the overall sound uh, essentially what 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 we're doing there is, is we're kind of we're, we're opening up an envelope if you like to kind of let it decay a bit longer um, but it was kind of hitting a, a, a peak a bit too soon so rambling on a bit there the upshot was that it, for my design I eventually uh, decided upon using a 50k logarithmic potentiometer which for me gives the level of control that I want over a decent sweep range of, of the pot. I'll, I'll demonstrate that when we have a look at the module. Um, so what I did I, I basically took the the circuit the original circuit diagrams and from that put together a strip board layout which looks like this. So there's a 50k logarithmic pot in there. C5 and C6, now they are the capacitors that essentially tune the bandwidth of the noise. The, the Q3 at the bottom there is the transistor that generates the white noise. Another point there is that underneath the collector leg of Q3 I've made a track break. If that leg accidentally comes into contact with any other bits of the circuit or gets earthed or it, it will stop producing white noise. So to minimize the risk of it contacting anything that it shouldn't do, I made a track break there and basically just dangled the leg through through a hole. Um, and it, it worked for me. But yeah, back, back to C5 and C6, by choosing the values for those capacitors, you can kind of tune the the bandwidth if you like of of the uh, noise that you that you're filtering out of of the white noise which is all frequencies um, the bigger the capacitors the kind of lower the the uh, frequencies that you will get so obviously we see there we've got the smaller capacitors produce the uh, high fizz of a high hat and we use bigger capacitors to get the uh, fizz the, the more kind of uh, medium range fizz of a, uh, um, a snare drum with the snare turned on obviously. Um, yeah I'm not going to go into great detail of describing how the circuit works. Have a look at the links in the description if you want to find out more about what the circuit is and how it does what it does. Um, but for me the important thing is what does it sound like? Well if you actually follow me on Instagram then you'll have had a little sneak peek as to um, what these things do. If you don't follow me on Instagram then why not? If you look for me don't look for Cuzzy Sound. For some reason it wouldn't let me have Cuzzy Sound. Look for Cuzzy Modular. C-U-S-I dot Modular. And you shall see me there. I put little tidbits up there. Some things that you won't see on this channel and some things which are a teaser for, for this channel. But Anyway, enough of the adverts, um, let's come over to the synth, have a look in a bit closer detail, we can have a look at what controls we have, and then we'll fire it up and listen to what uh, my new percussive noise module sounds like. This is the module, I think see on the, on the top we've got hi-hat, on the bottom we've got the snare, 
They're essentially behind the panel. There's just there's, there's the two circuits that um, I've shown you on the strip board layout. Uh, the hi hat has the smaller capacitors. Um, so basically, this is the decay control. Then you have a trigger input, and then you have the drum output. The snare, you know, exactly the same controls. You've got the decay control, you've got a trigger input, which I haven't actually labeled yet, and the output. One of the differences on um, Christian's design was that he, in his circuit diagram, he, he put a, a Vactrol uh, across the pot so he could control the decay with a, with a CV signal. Um, I had a go at that. There we go. That's a, a Vactrol with an input on it. Um, didn't actually work for me. Didn't do what I hoped it would do. So in the final build, I just left that out. Um, so then, like say, very very simple. You have a trigger input, decay control, and the output. Right. So let's let's reset up this this patch. So what I'm actually doing here? Uh, let's plug things in, then I'll I'll talk you through what I've actually set up. Okay. So what I've got, I've got a a, a gate signal coming from the beat step which is going into the gate buffer which allows me to kind of split things around. Um, the original gate signal is going to the trigger on the hi-hat. I've then got a second version of that signal going into um, the uh, Analog Lab Swiss sub oscillator module um, this is something again that, that you, you can find that on uh, details about that on, on Instagram um, I may do something that kind of explains how I, I put it together um, but you know it's this now this, this is not one of mine but basically what this allows me to do is it allows me to take half a clock speed out so it divides the clock by two and I'm using that divide by two to trigger the snare. It's also got a divide by four and I'm going to use that to trigger the kick drum module. Um, I've already uh, done some uh, videos on, on kick drums and uh, the link should be somewhere uh, around the top of the screen and uh, so you can go and have a look at kind of um, how I put that together. Um, but that just that's just going to add to the mix, so we can kind of hear what uh, what it sounds like as a basically a, a almost complete drum machine. So the output from them all is just going into the mixer, so there's there's no post processing whatsoever. Now I've turned everything down so that all you're going to hear initially is the hi hat. So here's the hi hat. a fairly short decay. Now on on the hi-hat I actually only had one 50k log pot in my uh, supplies so I'm waiting for another one to arrive. Um, so this has got the original um, module in a week design of a, a, a 100k pot on it um, which well as you, you'll see very quickly Starts opening so it's sounding like noise, it's not sounding like a hi hat. I mean, even if I um, it's not usable much beyond kind of halfway. I quite like that sound. So, that's what hi-hat sounds like. Turn it out, let's bring the snare in. Remember this is in half the time for the hi-hat, so. And again, on the decay, but this is the, the 50k log.
So the 50k log in my system gives me a more usable range. So there we go, we've, we've got snare and we've got hi-hat and to complete the drum ensemble I can bring in kick drum which is on quarter time. Now something that, that is uh, good about having, rather than just a drum machine, having um, it built into a, a modular system is you can actually start and now play around with things. So if I take the hi-hat signal and I put it through my VCF here, so I'll take the output back into there. We can have some fun with it. We can have even more fun. I've got a looping envelope generator here. So I'm now triggering the cutoff on the filter of ECF um, with a looped envelope that has a kind of a, a bit of a rise on, on the attack and quite a long uh, release setting and it's switched to automatically loop so I'm not triggering the envelope it's just it's just looping increase the attack even more Loads of fun and start mixing up and filtering and having lots of fun with, with your modular percussive voices. So yeah, well, the circuits are out there, everybody's had a go at building the circuit and tweaking the circuit. Um, the, the link's in the description for the schematics. I've shown you the uh, strip board layout that I use and you can hear what the result is. So yeah, it's pretty simple really. So go on, have a go, build your own. <laughs>